this video I want to talk to you guys about the concept of using a CW like this Taser Pulse Plus uh, for EDC. Now, first thing I want to talk about is terminology. Now, this is a Taser. Taser is a brand name, uh, just like Kleenex is a brand name of facial tissue. Taser is a brand name of CEW or ECD or ECW. There, there's legal terminology for for it in different states, it's, but it's basically lumping everything together. So CW stands for Conductive Energy Weapon. Some states will consider it that, or some ordinance, ordinances will. Some will just call them Energy Weapons or EWs. Uh, some will call them ECDs or Electronic Control Weapons, or ele ECDs, like Electronic Control Devices, or ECWs, the weapons part. Uh, so it depends on um, who you're talking to and which state you're in, uh, which will decide what they're labeled as. So all tasers are CEWs, but not all CEWs are tasers. Now, Taser makes um, ones that shoot projectiles, such as my Taser Pulse Plus, but also ones that are just stun devices, like the Strike Light, which is a flashlight and a stun device. Now, my Taser Pulse Plus can't act as a stun device. I can remove my cartridge, or even if I fire my cartridge, I can still make contact with somebody and arc. So, that's not out of the realm of possibility for my Taser. It can act as both. But there is a difference there. Uh, there's different things that they'll do. Um, a CEW that launches projectiles is typically intended to, as a standoff device that can cause physical incapacitation of somebody for a period of time, uh, for a certain period of time. And that's typically the time that the arc is, uh, is going through and the circuit is completed throughout the body. Uh, so we'll talk about the differences between the civilian and law enforcement models, but typically there's a difference between that and those are generally, uh, generically called tasers, just because taser kind of holds the patent on that uh, kind of technology. But there are some rip-off brands uh, out there. So not all CEWs are tasers, but all tasers are CEWs. Because even stun devices are considered CEWs under law. Because it uses electronic electricity as a weapon. Now let's talk about some legal restrictions that you might have for a CEW. Specifically talking about the ones that shoot projectiles, like, um, like uh, my Pulse Plus. So... Uh, some restrictions that you might have uh, would be at not being able to own one at all. Uh, there are a couple states where you're not allowed to own one or you need to be uh, permitted by a specific entity uh, within the government in order to carry one, or you need to be a law enforcement officer. And I believe New Jersey, uh, I believe it uh, recently they are allowed to actually use tasers, but it's kind of a weird situation, they're not allowed, they weren't allowed to have training inside the state or some kind of weird goofy situation like that. There are some states where you need to actually be trained and licensed and have a permit specifically to carry it or you're not allowed to carry it at all. But uh, generally speaking, there are no real regulations on it because it doesn't, it's not a firearm and uh, the law doesn't really have anything against anything that's not a firearm for some reason, unless it's like maybe a knife. But generally speaking, there aren't that many restrictions. However, when it comes to carrying one, like as an EDC item, like concealing one, I would just say uh, for the most part, you do have to do your own research on this, but for the most part from what I've seen is if you require a permit to carry a firearm, you're probably going to need that same permit just to be able to carry a concealed uh, CEW. And that, can, that goes for stun devices. If you need a permit to carry openly, if you were to try to carry your CEW openly, you're going to need that permit, the same permit that you would need for a pistol. But because typically that permit will cover all weapons. Like if you're wanting an open carry permit, that open carry permit will typically cover all weapons, if I remember correctly. Some states will allow open carry but not concealed carry unless you get a permit. That concealed carry permit will typically cover a CEW, but there are some differences depending on the states. They might actually have extra restrictions, and certain CEWs might not apply to that. So you might be able to conceal stun devices, but not something like my Taser Pulse Plus because it looks too much like a gun. There might be some weird stuff out there. but. In other cases,
cases there are there is more legal flexibility. And number one, most states will not require a background check for it. it. It is not regulated in that manner. However, there are some states that are regulated in that manner, or we will not allow them at all. Also, some flexibility that you do have with this is after you use it, you can actually create distance from your attacker and, and to the point where you actually feel safe. If you were to use the, do that with a firearm, that would be called fleeing the scene, and there is a charge for that. So just be aware of that. Uh, other flexibility is you can, uh, in some jurisdictions, uh, you depending on your laws, I don't know everything, and I don't know all the local laws, uh, but I do know that it can be used as a show of force because it is not a firearm, and as long as it's used properly, it is not a deadly force instrument. Typically, deadly force is in the manner you use something, not just the existence of it at all. Now, with a firearm, pretty much just having it is deadly force, I guess, but uh, that seems to be how it's treated these days. So. Uh, what I mean by having a little bit more flexibility and using it as a show of force, pulling the, what I mean by that is pulling your, your CEW out, painting the attacker, and giving verbal commands. See, I got an LED and a light. Uh, putting it on them where you would deploy it at and give them verbal commands. Get back or you're going to get tased. Get back or you're going to get tased. And that would be a show of force. You can warn them ahead of time. Now, you can't do that with a firearm necessarily. Uh, some some places you you might be able to get away with that, but you know I I don't live in a state that's like that. Uh, so yeah, then you're gonna have to just check your your legal stuff. So anyways, there is a little bit. Uh, one thing I didn't add into this is the moral flexibility. So some people. Uh, you might have a daughter or a son who might not be comfortable with owning a firearm, or there might be somebody who's wanting a different option, knows that, you know, mace is probably not going to be all that great because you kind of get get what you give, if you know what I mean. Uh, a baton probably isn't a very good option uh, uh, for some people, but they might see a CDW as a good alternative that will actually stop the attacker literally in their tracks and give them time to get away, but it's the very low likelihood of actually causing death. Uh, now, it can happen, but morally speaking, some people might like it for that, and it might give them that flexibility of having a weapon system that is not intentionally inflicting deadly force on them, right, when used properly. It's, you, it's less lethal force and it will stop them in their tracks, but it won't have any permanent uh, effects on them. That's the advantage of a CEW is it'll get the desired result without any permanent damage to that person. That was kind of why it was, uh, that's part of the design, right? So the, there's a difference between civilian and law enforcement models that we need to discuss because a lot of people think, oh, well, just get what the police use because that's more effective. Well, that, that, that's actually not true. Uh, they're designed for different things. Uh, law enforcement models have different ad, uh, added things, uh, different types of uh, things that you can get, like power packs and certain cartridges that will have different ranges that are applicable for it, uh, for different uh, cartridges that will work at 7 yards, on, up to 7 yards, or some that will work out to like 25, or not 7 yards, 7 feet and some that will work out to like 30 feet. I think those were more of the older cartridges, but typically the newer cartridges, the smart probes as they're called, will work uh, within 15 feet, up, up to 15 feet. Uh, and there's a reason for that, and we'll talk about that in a different video. But they have cool little gadgets that will like activate body cameras and stuff like that, have, have an area for an extra cartridge if they wanted to reload or whatever. Um, <clears throat> Now, the civilian models will have cool things like uh, linking to your phone through Bluetooth. So if you activate your uh, taser or you pull the trigger, it'll notify dispatch and it'll send somebody to your area uh, because you're, you, you're having a use of force incident. Uh, but also, they're less expensive. Depending on the model you get of law enforcement model, you can own one. There's no, 
there's not very many restrictions on that, but um, if you own one, it's going to be about $1,000, if not up to $2,000, maybe more, depending on where you live. So that, just for a use of force, where it's probably going to get confiscated anyways, and you might want to drop it and leave the area with your family, versus something that costs like $400, maybe less, maybe up to $500, but typically not much more. I don't know. I... Also, a difference that I didn't talk about, civilian model has a 30 second charge, means the person's gonna be locked up for 30 seconds. That's meant for you to have time to escape. Again, you can get to a safe distance after doing that. That's not a luxury you typically have with a firearm. Now, you can seek cover, but you could be seen as fleeing the scene if you get to a safe distance after shooting somebody. Uh, so, anyways, law enforcement models, they have a five second charge. The idea behind that five second charge, if you already get one, just keep in mind that five second charge is meant so the officers have enough time to overpower the person and put them in handcuffs to an effect an arrest. It's not to sit there and just put them under a five second charge just for the heck of it. Okay? That it's just deemed as enough time for them to be able to get on top of somebody and overpower them and control them to effect an arrest. That's the difference. They have a duty to act. You do not, typically. So, once you have achieved the result of getting that person down, you can break contact. So, anyways, this was the basic overview of the concept of carrying a CEW. I'm going to get in a little bit more depth on comparing a CEW and a pistol. And again, CEW being the ones that launch projectiles. So I'm going to talk about that in a later video. But I, it's a lot to talk about. As you see, this is going over 10 minutes on this video. So I apologize for that, but there was a lot to cover. There is a lot to cover with this concept. So anyway, I appreciate you guys sitting through it and uh, sticking around. And I'll see you in the next video. You guys have a good one.